everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing well. Today I am really excited because I have a perfume haul video for you. I feel like I haven't done one of these on my channel for quite a long time, so I'm just really excited to be sharing my new perfume goodies with you today. Uh, before we get started though, if you're new here then welcome! I create new perfume videos weekly here on YouTube, so if that's something you'd be interested in then don't forget to click the subscribe button below and also activate the notification bell as well so that you can be notified every time I post a new video. And with that being said, it's time to get yourself comfortable, grab a wee drink if you would like to, and let's get started with the fragrances. So first up today we have Classique, the Eau de Parfum from John Paul Gaultier in this really cute little bottle here. I think this bottle is absolutely adorable, especially in the dinky wee 30ml size. Um, so this is my first ever fragrance from Jean-Paul Gaultier, I think. Oh no, actually that's a lie. I used to own the Scandal fragrance. I owned like a little travel size of the original Scandal and I did also used to own a 30ml of Scandal by night. Um, but I moved those on to a new home because they weren't quite for me in the end. So this is now the only fragrance from that house that I now own. And um, yeah, I really like this one. It's not a perfume that I had on my radar. It's not really a fragrance I had been planning to get. It's just a perfume that I randomly tested one day in a shop and I was quite surprised at how much I liked it given how um, unsuccessful my previous fragrances were for me like from that house. I just wasn't necessarily expecting to find anything else from this house. I've tried the Labelle original one and I recently tried Labelle Intense, I think it is, or Le Parfum, the newest version of that one, and um, I really, really don't like those at all, unfortunately. I know they're really popular, I know many people love them and stuff, but for me I just found them far too much, like too sweet, too kind of synthetic smelling, too scratchy, and I just, um, uh, to me they just kind of have this harsh quality, so I wasn't really expecting much from this fragrance, I didn't really think I'd like it to be honest, but um, like I said I was quite taken by surprise with it and I do really like it. So um, <laughs> first of all I'll just show you this little bit at the front here, this is what you actually um, you have to pull that part off. Oh, let's see if I can do it without... There we go. So um, yeah, this fragrance is really nice. Um, I would say it's probably my favourite from the whole of the Jean-Paul Gaultier. I really like this one, you guys. So I'm just gonna get the notes up on my phone and let you know what's in this fragrance. So in the top notes we have rum, rose and mandarin orange. And then in the heart notes we have orchid and narcissus. Then in the base notes we have vanilla, amber, tonka bean and also sandalwood. So I didn't realise there was rum in here, that would explain a lot actually. Oh, this is such a rich fragrance, it really has a lot of depth to it and it's a very very sensual mm, femme fatale nighttime fragrance. And to me, like in addition to those notes that are actually in here, to me I almost pick up on something reminiscent of incense in here or something um, really woody as well. Like I say, it does have a lot of depth in here, it's a very rich intoxicating fragrance and I've really been enjoying this one. I think it would be a really gorgeous, um, alluring, intimate kind of fragrance, you know, maybe quite nice for a date night if you're um, going for drinks with your partner or if you're having a cosy night in, that type of thing. It's just a really nice one, it's quite different as well to anything else I own, which I really like. And yeah, it almost has this incensey, slightly spicy kind of nuance in there just to give it a little bit of attitude and it's a very sultry, sensual fragrance. I really like this one. Next up today we have Black Opium Illicit Green and this is a fragrance I had been debating on and off for like a wee while um, but I decided just to get it in the end because actually, whoops, I think this would be a really nice, slightly fresher, fruitier version of Black Opium for me to wear in the warmer months that are coming up. Um, actually, it's been quite warm over the last few weeks here in Scotland. Um, but as most of you will know by now, I absolutely love the original Black Opium. 
and um, to be honest I don't know if I would enjoy it quite as much in the height of summer so I thought this would be a nice little alternative for me to wear in the warmer months um, I, I do quite like this one it is quite similar to the original so I don't know if um, I don't know if I would actively like recommend it to you as one that you need to get but certainly if you are um, a big fan of the black opium line and you're wanting something a bit uh, fruitier a bit fresher for the warmer months then I would recommend it but overall I would say it's still pretty similar to the original oh, I really really like this one you guys um, so I'll just get the notes up for you so in the top notes we have pear, fig leaf and green mandarin then in the middle notes we have fig, jasmine and orange blossom and then in the base notes we have bourbon vanilla, coffee and also patchouli so I know they don't have the licorice in this one um, overall this one is definitely a bit lighter than the original and like I say it leans slightly more towards those fresh fruity nuances in there so for me as somebody who adores the whole black opium line pretty much with the exception of a few um, but for me personally it is worth having um, especially for the summer and things like that I would say upon the first spray you do definitely smell like the fruity notes you, you can smell the most differences when you first spray it but then as it dries down it kind of becomes a bit more similar to the original and overall I would maybe say this fragrance is a bit on the softer side it's not quite as strong as the original black opium in my opinion but again for me personally that's going to be really good for the height of summer because um, I really struggle with the heat actually I just I don't cope well with it at all um, <laughs> you know come, come the summer I'm gonna have my fans in here to keep me cool and I just um, sorry I've got a hair in my mouth um, but I really struggle with the heat basically and if I'm wearing a fragrance that's on the stronger side then that actually really bothers me because I can find it too much it like gives me a headache but this is a nice lighter version, it's a bit fresher, it's a bit fruitier and it's on the softer side so for me it's perfect for summer, really nice for spring as well, just such an easy fragrance to throw on super pleasant, super nice I just really like this one, I definitely much prefer this one to the Neon I would recommend this one over the Neon because I personally was not a fan of the Neon unfortunately I found it kind of sour and just a bit synthetic smelling and I actually really wasn't the biggest fan of that one personally um, so I'd probably recommend this one if you're looking for a fruity version of Black Opium Oh, I just really really like it. I actually think there's something in here that's um, it's kind of juicy as well like it's really well balanced and actually the notes that they've added in here really complement the original black opium DNA. I think I read in the description that it's inspired by mixology uh, so I don't know if they mean like cocktails or just the way that um, different ingredients can come together and sort of complement one another but I found that quite interesting and I can kind of feel that coming together when you actually smell this just because they do have kind of a bit of everything going on in here like you have that original black opium heavier DNA in there but then it's complemented by the kind of fresher brighter juicier notes Um, there's even maybe it's interesting they haven't only added in fruits as well they've added in fig leaf so that's going to add a nice fresh quality to the fragrance and I'm just I'm I'm really enjoying this one. I think it's nothing um, groundbreaking. I wouldn't say that it's necessarily a must-have, but for me personally, it's a really worthwhile addition to my collection, um, especially for the spring and summer, like I already explained. And it might be one to check out for you if um, if you already know that you love the black opium line. You know, if you're just a big fan of the line, then I would probably recommend checking this one out. I just got the little 30 mil again because um, like I say I'm probably going to use this one most during the spring and summer not necessarily all year round it's not necessarily going to become my favorite from the ones that I own so I didn't feel the need to pick up the bigger the bigger size you know um, but anyway so that's Black Opium Illicit Green from YSL another new addition to my collection and I don't know about you but the bottle is really pretty I actually am quite a big fan of that you can't really see it too well um, 
yeah, well, the, the middle part is green and if you hold it up to the light, it's um, a really nice bright green colour and I think it's really pretty. Next up today we have this fragrance here, Milk from Commodity Fragrances. Um, so I'll just show you it kind of in the box first because the packaging is really quite cool in my opinion. Um, so this was kindly gifted to me by the company and um, I was really intrigued to try this one. This is the one that I chose from the house. It was actually a blind, um, not a blind buy because I didn't buy it, but I'd never tried this one before when I chose it. So um, I wasn't quite sure, you know, if it would work out or not. Um, this is the one that intrigued me the most out of all of their fragrances. Now, um, commodity perfumes are kind of interesting to me because actually they do their line of perfumes, but with each fragrance, you can choose what strength that you want it to be in. So um, you can choose a, a personal fragrance, which is very close to the skin. You can choose the expressive strength, which is kind of a medium strength, I suppose, or you can go bold, which is sort of the equivalent of um, a beast mode fragrance. So it's quite cool how they allow you to choose how strong you want your fragrance to be because it's quite a personal thing, I would say, you know, um, I've noticed quite a few varying like thoughts and opinions on this from you guys in the comments. Some of you mentioned to me that you actually prefer a much softer scent that you can kind of get subtle wafts of throughout the day and others mentioned to me that uh, you prefer a much louder perfume. So I think it's a really personal like preference and it's really cool that they allow you to make that choice. So this is the full bottle that I chose from Commodity. Um, I'll quickly show you also the little um, discovery kit that I got from them as well, which included um, three different vials of perfume of three different strengths of one fragrance. Oh my gosh, I'm so bad at explaining things. I'm so sorry. But this is the little kit that they gave me of their perfume Velvet that I got to try as well. This is their little um, scent space kit, they call it. And, and what they have actually are these little symbols here to represent the different uh, strengths of perfume. So this is the personal strength, this is expressive, and that one is, uh, that one means bold. It actually tells you that like on the back here. Really, really interesting concept. Um, I think it's really quite cool. So this is what you get if you, um, if you purchase a little sample kit of one fragrance and it comes with all three strengths to try like each strength of the perfume so like i say this one was velvet the scent kit of velvet in personal expressive and bold strength so i had a lot of fun testing that one out as well um velvet wasn't quite for me in the end but i would recommend it to any of you who already enjoy um maison margiela's by the fireplace because um again that perfume's also not for me <laughs> but I know many of you do like that fragrance. Um, to me, Velvet from Commodity is very similar to that perfume. So I would uh, recommend it to any of you who love that sort of fragrance with that kind of toasted marshmallow, slightly charred wood, um, fireplace kind of smell, if you know what I mean. This definitely has that. I don't know if it actually tells me what the notes are. So yeah, I'll see if this leaflet has any information on the notes of this perfume. So. Uh, it's mentioning rose petals, uh, almonds, amber, a sort of smoky accord, musk, saffron, patchouli, all of those kind of notes, you guys. So if you like the sound of that and you already enjoy uh, By the Fireplace from Maison Margiela, then I would definitely recommend checking out Velvet. You can order the little um, sample set that I just showed there. But anyway, the one I chose was actually Milk in the medium expressive strength. And I'd heard pretty good things about this one. Um, but again, this was like a blind a blind buy, if you know what I mean, I'd never tried it. So I didn't know, <laughs> I didn't know how it would go down actually. Um, so yeah, their packaging is really, really awesome. The way that this opens out, it's like really heavy packaging and the way that it opens up, it almost reminds me of um, a new like iPhone, the way that that's sort of packaged, the way that technology might be packaged. Let's see if I can get this off with my nails. So yeah, this part comes off here and that's the fragrance inside there. So this is the bottle here. 
very heavy, um, really nice packaging, quite a bold look I would say, um, and the the cap is really weighty as well and it has this almost like rubber texture to it which I quite like. Um, so this fragrance is pretty cool, I would say a lot of you might also enjoy this one actually. So the notes of this perfume, we have a cold milk accord, there's musk, there is also marshmallow, tonka bean and mahogany woods in the base. And when you first spray it, it's definitely a lighter, marshmallowy, milky, lactonic, creamy kind of fragrance. But then the more it dries down, it becomes slightly spicier in like a woody kind of way, um, I guess from the tonka bean. And um, the, the longer that it's on your skin, the more the woody notes really start to come through. So overall, I would say after a while, it becomes just more of like a woody fragrance as opposed to a milky or a marshmallowy scent. Um, it does primarily develop into a uh, rich woody fragrance. And it's a really pleasant one. I definitely prefer this one to Velvet just for me personally because it's a bit smoother. It doesn't have that smokiness about it. Um, I know some people really enjoy a smoky note in fragrances and I can in moderation I suppose but like the By the Fireplace and also Velvet they were just like too much for me personally. Um, yeah this one is much more easygoing. It's a bit more wearable I would say. Really nice, sweet, creamy, pretty woody as well. You definitely get the marshmallow in here, but again, I would say the marshmallow note in here is reminiscent of a toasted marshmallow and uh, it's pretty musky as well. Ah, so that one is Milk from Commodity, another new addition to my collection. It was very generous of them to send this one over to me. I will be really enjoying this one. Um, I'll probably enjoy this one more come the uh, autumn and winter, to be honest. I don't really, um, I don't know if I see myself reaching for this one over the summer because it is a richer fragrance. Um, so I think I'll enjoy this one more in the cooler months, but anyway, and also, just so that you know, this fragrance comes in the three different strengths as well, as do all of their scents. So this is the medium strength one, as indicated by this little um, icon here. And uh, the lightest strength comes in a white bottle. This one has the white writing with the black bottle and the bold fragrance has a black bottle with gold writing. So they all look like slightly different. Um, but anyway, so that's Milk from Commodity Fragrances. Next up today we have a beautiful fragrance from the house of Narciso Rodriguez, one of my favourite designer perfume houses. So of course I'm really excited about that and it is Musk Noir. Um, I cannot believe it's taken me so long to pick this one up you guys. I don't know why I didn't get it sooner because it's such a beautiful fragrance and um, it's, just, it's just absolutely wonderful. I have been wearing this one quite a lot since I got it. You might even be able to see a slight dent on there. Um, so I'll just read out the notes for you. Uh, so the notes of this fragrance, we have plum, musk, heliotrope and also suede. And in some ways it kind of surprises me how few notes there actually are because um, this fragrance smells a bit more complex to me. Um, <sighs> This is one of those magical scents that I actually find really difficult to explain because um, the way that those notes interact with your own skin chemistry, that's where the scent really kind of blooms in my opinion. It's, it's not even really individual notes that I can pick up, it's more this overall kind of um, effect. So it's definitely very musky. It has this bright feeling to it. It's kind of powdery as well. Maybe slightly creamy and sweet from the um, fruity notes. And I do pick up some of the suede in here, but it's done in a really nice, smooth, well-blended way and it's not overpowering to the scent. Um, I do think though, I think that's one of the reasons why I uh, put off purchasing this for a wee while because I was maybe not so keen on the idea of a suede note, just in case it was too strong because Leather notes and suede notes, um, I'm very sensitive to those and I can be really easily put off by them. So maybe that's why I, you know, didn't get around to picking this one up sooner. But actually it's done so well and it just blends seamlessly into the kind of muskiness and the powdery quality that this has. It creates this kind of texture. In fact, I think 
I watched um, one of Moon Perfume's videos recently and I think she mentioned a velvety texture that this fragrance has um, and I would say you know she's absolutely spot on with that because this fragrance does have a kind of texture to it um, it's just really really unusual and addicting and sensual alluring super super ultra feminine as well and it just has this beautiful subtle sweetness in there it's not overly sweet it's not obviously sweet at all but it smells kind of almost like you know the way that narciso rodriguez for her edt that one has a subtle sweetness in there but it's not obvious this has that same kind of sweetness in there and i would say in fact if you're already a big fan of the for her EDT in the black bottle, I would say there's a good chance you're gonna also enjoy this one. And um, again, I picked up a little 30 mil of this one, but I do kind of wish I had um, got the bigger bottle because I have been wearing a lot of this and I, I can already see a dent. And I already know it's gonna be like a favorite of mine going forward. So I do kind of wish I'd got the bigger size, but oh well. I'll know for next time. Um, but anyway, so that's Narciso, um, <laughs> I forgot the name there, Musk Noir, a really gorgeous, um, velvety, smooth, sweet, but not too sweet, musky, alluring, gorgeous scent. And next up today, we have another fragrance from the Narciso Rodriguez house, and that is Musk Noir Rose in this beautiful bottle here. So this was a blind buy of mine. I had never tested it before, but um, after hearing a few people talk about it, uh, Chantel Tiffany and Moon Perfumes, I just decided to go ahead and purchase it. It was just the 30 mil as well. So, you know, um, but it's absolutely divine, you guys. So I'm gonna go through the main accords and then I'll tell you the notes. So the main accords of this fragrance, we have musky, rose, vanilla, powdery, fruity, sweet, tuberose, white floral, citrus, and animalic. Um, and then the notes themselves, we have plum, bergamot, pink pepper, musk, rose, tuberose, and vanilla in the base. So um, from looking at the notes, I was expecting this one to be pretty different to musk noir. And actually I was quite surprised upon the first spray at um, how similar they kind of are in a way. This definitely retains that DNA of Musk Noir, but I would say overall it's quite a bit sweeter. Yeah, it's definitely a lot sweeter actually. And it does have that bright, uh, slightly, slightly sparkling feeling to it from the pink pepper and the bergamot which you don't have in the original musk noir this still has the plum in it though so you do have that kind of fruitiness as well this fragrance is perhaps a bit smoother uh, creamier as well from the tuberose and vanilla not as powdery as musk noir and overall, I would probably say that this one is a bit more likeable and mass appealing. And even for those who um, maybe didn't get on so well with any from the Narciso Rodriguez line, this could be a good place to start, I would say, because um, it's definitely, it's probably the sweetest from the whole line, actually. It's definitely sweeter than um, Poudre, it's sweeter than Musque Noir, it's sweeter than the EDT. So um, if you're a fan of sweet perfumes and you found the other fragrances from the house to be too musky, not sweet enough and things like that, then I would probably give this one a try. Yeah, it's just a really nice one. Um, again, I've been wearing this one a lot. So I would say these two, I have been wearing pretty much non-stop since I got them. Um, I've been finding it really hard to decide day to day which one out of these two to wear because um, they're both so stunning in their own different kind of ways. Um, I don't know which one I prefer out of the two at the moment. I would maybe, actually no, I can't decide, I can't decide. Sometimes I'm more in the mood for one more than the other. Um, I think probably what it comes down to is um, whether or not I'm in the mood for a sweet perfume because this one is sweeter than this one and the Musk Noir original smells overall a bit more natural and it just gives that natural alluring pheromone kind of feeling to it. Whereas this one is definitely more perfumey and it has more of that sweet perfume, rose vanilla, bergamot, 
you know, that kind of feeling about it. Um, so it kind of depends on my mood really, but they're both absolutely beautiful. Um, I'm really glad I have them in my collection and I think I will be getting through these pretty quickly, to be honest, especially seeing as they're both 30 mils. Um, <laughs> they're just both wonderful, you guys. Let me know if you've tried either of these. Um, I did also recently try the Pure Musk from Narciso Rodriguez and I have to say it's really, really nice. Um, I was actually about to buy that one as well, but I kind of told myself to hold off. But I can definitely see myself wanting to add that one into my collection at a later date, just the original Musk Noir, um, especially because I think when I tried it in the shop, I actually layered it on top of my, um, was it this one I had on? Oh no, it might have been this one, the Musk Noir. I think I layered it on top of that fragrance that I was already wearing and they, they blended so well together. It was just really beautiful. It added this dimension to the scent and um, it had this clean feeling to it, but it was still kind of sweet and very just uh, alluring overall. So that's another really nice one that I am quite tempted to pick up as well. And last up today, but by no means least, we have this beauty here, 51 Parfum Essence de Parfum from Rocha Parfums. This was a beautiful birthday gift and I have been absolutely loving it. I did mention it in my video the other week there. Um, this is the bottle right here, just absolutely beautiful. So the notes of this fragrance, there are so many actually, I can never remember them all. Um, and I don't necessarily, I don't really pick up on all of these, but I'm gonna read them out anyway, just in case you're interested. So we have bergamot in the top notes, then in the middle notes we have um, lang lang, gardenia, orange blossom, raspberry, tuberose, lily of the valley, lily, may rose and jasmine. And then in the base notes there is vanilla, cashmere wood, sandalwood, benzoin, orris, violet, cinnamon, anise, clove and also patchouli. So a lot going on. Um, I definitely don't pick up on everything. Um, for a start I'm not really, I'm not an expert so I wouldn't be able to pick them out anyway. But also these fragrances from Rocha Parfums, they're so well blended, like they're all so smooth you guys. And let me know what you think, if you've tried um, any from this Essence de Parfum range, let me know what your experience was of it because um, to me they're just so incredibly smooth and um, luxurious smelling, it's just oh, <laughs> squeaky lid there. Goodness, you guys, I can't. So this fragrance to me is quite fruity, slightly juicy in nature, very creamy, and um, you definitely get that warming benzoin vanilla accord in this fragrance. So those are the main things that I get from this. It makes sense to me that there's also tuberose in here because there is quite a thick, creamy feeling to the scent as well. And um, it is quite a nice level of sweetness, like it is quite a sweet perfume, but overall it smells very, very luxurious to me. And I believe the concept behind this particular fragrance was um, to capture elegance in a bottle, and um, I do think they have done exactly that. It's just absolutely wonderful, you guys. I have been loving this one. It's going to be one of my go-to scents. This fragrance doesn't feel too formal to me, even though it smells very luxurious, it's just very easy to wear, very uh, beautiful, very very sensual, and um, I actually think this would make a stunning signature scent as well because it's quite unique, it's unlike anything I own in my collection, it's not like anything else I've ever tried, so um, yeah I think it would make a stunning signature scent as well. I do also own Danger from this line and I, I also love that one, so I'm just thrilled with my new addition to my collection and that is 51 Pour Femme. So there we have it, everyone. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think in the comment section below and um, a huge thanks to all of you for all of your continued love and support. It really means a lot to me and um, I will quickly share with you my lipstick of the day and it is a Love Pop from Clinique, this one here. That's what I'm wearing on my lips today. Um, thank you again for watching. Take care. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like this video if you liked it. And I can't wait to see you again very soon on my next video. Bye.